Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanted to show you how to set up a Sennheiser G3 or G4 lavalier microphone. These wireless microphones are definitely my favorite microphones of all time. I've used them since the G2 came out maybe 10, 12 years ago, and I've had them ever since. Every time a new one comes out, I buy it. The G4 is the latest one at the time of this recording. But I wanted to show you a setup. If you're in a rush, check out the link in the description for a super fast video. I just wanted to make a fast video if you're on a shoot. I know sometimes I look it up. There's three things that you gotta set. That's in that video, click that. If you want a more complete tutorial, this is the tutorial. I'm gonna show you everything all about the mics, some of the accessories that I've upgraded to even the case, and some of the things like this that I wanna talk about that's not included with the wireless pack. So let's start with the basic setup of the wireless mic. This is the one I'm actually wearing right now. If I tap it, I'm wearing this one, the G3, but let's go over the G4. They're pretty much identical as far as the setup goes, so you don't have to worry about it if you have G3, G4. Even the G2 was pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and look at the couple of pieces that we have that comes with the case. In one hand right here, you have your receiver. So basically your receiver is the piece that goes in your camera and receives the feed from the microphone. That's this piece and it right here on top of it, it says AF out and it comes with this XLR connection that connects to your camera if you have XLR. If you have a DSLR, mirrorless, that type of camera, it does come in with this cable as well. This will connect right here on top and it's an eighth inch that will go into your camera. Those are the two cables that come with it. This is your receiver, and it does come with this piece that goes in the shoe mount, so you could connect this on the back. Sometimes I do place this right on top here. Actually, here's one where I just took the screw and I put it on top. It's an easier way for it to slide in than the way I have this set up. For this, I remove these brackets and put it in, but in this way, it'll just simply slides right into it. So those are the pieces that come with it. But your transmitter is the piece that comes with the microphone. So this microphone is what I'm wearing right now that clips on with this clip and then it goes here and it says mic on top and it has a mute option on top as well where you could mute it right here without turning it on and off. But let's go ahead and set it up for the very first time. This is what you wanna do. You want to open the transmitter or the receiver. So in this case, I'll just start with the receiver, which is this pack. I sometimes put a sticker just to make it easier to remember. This is the transmitter, the microphone connects to it, and the receiver goes in your camera. So let's go ahead and open the receiver. There's two buttons here on the side. You just press those to open it. So just like that, when it closes, you'll hear that. And you wanna turn it on. You just hold this for about three seconds and it will turn on the mic here. And you wanna do the same thing here with the transmitter. That's typically how I do it. I do the receiver first, then I hold down and do the transmitter second. So now they're both turned on. Now let's see how we set it up. In order to set it up, you have to press set and then here's your menu. You basically use up and down right here to go between all the different options you have, but we wanna focus on three things here. First, let's focus on our frequency. So if you go to easy setup, that's the option you wanna to go to, press set and here you have a current list, you have reset list, and you have your scan new list. Every time you show up to a new location, you might have some problems with frequencies. So I always do scan list and let us scan to show me what's available around me. If other people, for example, just this weekend I was shooting where a lot of people had these mic packs around me, so there was a lot of interference. You don't want that, you're gonna get hits and that's gonna interfere with your sound. So you wanna scan a new list, make sure you get a clean channel. There is a bunch of options as far as channel ranges go. So this one is 516 to 518. While this is scanning, let me show you what I'm talking about. On the back of your microphone, if you look right over here, it's gonna show you the range. This is 516 to 558. There is other ranges like in the 600s or in the 400s that came out recently. So you don't wanna really get anything in the 600s. There's some issues going on with that, with the government buying out those frequencies. So in the 500 range is the mic pack that you wanna pick up. I have a link in the description to everything I'm gonna talk about, including some of my uh, microphone upgrades and some of these packages if you wanna check those out, even the cases that I use. Let's go back to the frequency. So here, the easy setup is complete, and you have banks, and on their bank you have channels that are free. So there's basically gonna be hundreds of channels. Under bank 14, you can see there's 12. If I go to bank 15, there's 10, 16, and so on. And there's about 20 or so here. And if I go to one, I could see there's 10 channels. So let's just pick one, bank one. I'm gonna press set, 
And now I could set my channel from the available list. There was 10 available. So as you can see from one to three, it jumps. I'll do 1.3, I'll press set. And now this is set. So you could see your frequency is 519.650. You want to now go ahead and close this for a second. Go back to your transmitter and do the same thing to match it. Right now they're not matching. This is on 518. So you press set. You go up over here to frequency preset. Press set again. And we want to be on one. That's okay. Press set and go to three. So 519.650 is what we have. Press set and that's stored. Now they're going to hear each other. If you're on the different frequencies, they're not going to communicate together. So you want to make sure you set that up the way I showed you. Now you have that set up. Next, we still are not done. We want to do a couple more things. Let's press set right here while we have our transmitter and let's go to sensitivity. Press set here. Sensitivity is the way it picks up the audio around you. These are not very directional. They'll kind of pick up a pattern around you. So even if this microphone is pointed upside down, it'll still pick up a decent, unlike shotgun mics that are very directional. So what you want to do is set up your sensitivity to be kind of low. It actually goes really low, negative 60 dB, but I typically like negative 27 dB for some of the noisier environments that I'm in. But if you're in a super noisy environment, go down with it and then bump up the audio on your camera. So I'm gonna do 27, but try this out. Go ahead and check it with your camera and the way you have it set up to see which you like, but negative 27 is where I like to be. So you could start there and then tweak, go up and down based on your preference on that. And if I go to sit here, there's not much else here we need to worry about. The other options are not like naming, uh, auto lock, you don't have to worry about that. So basically, the scan, the frequency preset, and the sensitivity is what you want to worry about on the transmitter. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now I'm going to go back to the receiver one more time, and we want to change one more thing here. So I'm going to press set. Easy setup we talked about. That's frequency preset. And AF out is what we want to worry about. So if you press AF out, again, this is sort of like sensitivity. It does change the audio level. So the lower you go, the quieter the camera audio level is gonna be, the mic audio level, and the higher you go, the louder it's gonna be. I typically like to leave this at negative 12 or negative 18 dB with the negative 27 sensitivity on the other transmitter right here. So I'm gonna press set here. Again, try it out based on your setting. If you want more volume, bump this up. If you want less volume, bump it down. That will change it there. And again, I'm just simplifying what these are doing here. I'm gonna just press on to get off the menu. So now everything is set on both of these devices. We're ready to go. All you will have to do is now plug this in your camera, depending on what kind of connection you have. If you have XLR, you plug this in and get going. And if not, the eighth inch will do. And you could just put this on the shoe mount if you connected this piece. Now let's talk about batteries. So as you could see, I have rechargeable batteries here and these last about six, seven hours, depending on how long I have the camera on. I love these. I'll put a link in the description to these, but I just bought like eight pack of these with a charger and I always swap out these for, actually both of these right now have that chargeable, but it just takes double A's. You could just take standard double A's like this Duracell here and you could use these. They pretty much last you all day. The one thing you want to do is never show whoever you put this on how to turn it off because that could cause you a problem. You want to be in control. So you could simply show them the mute button here and then let them do that. But I usually don't even show them that. I like to have the control from the camera end so they don't actually interfere with what I have going on here. But that's the battery setup here. Next, let's talk about these kind of transmitters. So just like you have your transmitter here where the microphone, the lavalier microphone is going into, there's these types that come with a different package. So you could buy these, like these three pieces came in one package. You could buy these two in one package or there's a bunch of different packages like this. But what this does is, is if you have a handheld mic, you could just put it right here. This is just the XLR connection with a handheld mic. And then this will be sent to your camera on the receiver. And this also takes simple double A's right here. And this is super simple to set up the exact same way as I showed you on the other one. Here's your on and off, here's your up and down, and here's your set. You will set the same exact way as the other pieces that I showed you over here with the sensitivity, frequency, and things like that. And you also have these type of handheld microphones where this piece 
is just built right into it. So this one actually has this right built into it. You don't have to plug it in, but some handheld mics like this don't have that. You'll just have to go into it. But in this set, I believe this is in the 600 range, but you'll basically have to go ahead and unscrew this to change the batteries here. And again, it does take double A's just like that. And this has an on and off right here on the bottom right here, this little red icon. And I will turn the mic on and off. So that's what I wanted to show you with these setups. And once you start using this for a while, you'll notice that this microphone is a little bit hard to use. It's a little bulky. So after a while, I upgraded this microphone for more professional jobs. And I want to show you the microphone that I actually like here. It's a Countryman brand. And this is the microphone. Let me show you without this tape here. It's a very thin microphone. And it comes with a variety of different clips like vampire clips. Let me show you what a vampire clip looks like. So here's a vampire clip. It basically has two pointy ends here. So you gotta be careful when using these, but these vampire clips allow you to basically put a microphone without it being as bulky here. So you could just run the wire here and then put this in someone's shirt. It's a great way to hide these mics a lot easier than the standard mic that comes with it. So I'll put a link to this one in the description. It's a Countryman is the brand of the mic and it has the same connection that goes right onto your lavalier set. And lastly, I wanted to show you this case that does not come with the set. Typically, this is a G3 set, but this is, comes with this kind of case. The G4 set is a little bit bulkier of a case. But when you get your setup going, I recommend not going back to the box and getting a case like this. And this case basically has a spot for if you have this piece. It does not have a handheld microphone set, but you could also put your lobs right here. You'll have to unscrew them and then put all the cables here and your AA batteries go here but it's a really cool way to organize it. So you just simply close it. And this is a nice small waterproof case that you could take with you anywhere. So I got a couple of these for my different sets here. So on your camera, and again, depending on what kind of camera you have, when you plug in your microphone into your camera, you want to make sure on the audio level that the way I have a setup, I'm typically at five, six, seven, depending on the volume of the person. So that's what this is. And I'm going into input one, for example, if I have two lobs is input one and two, but I always leave it on manual so I could control the volume here instead of auto. Auto usually over modulates some of that setting. So I have that set up here. I'll show you something on the other side of the camera. And then this is your other setting that you have to actually pay attention to. I have it on mic input. So the way I have my lavalier set up, the way I showed you, it's on mic input. So that's right in between. If you go all the way here, you have mic plus 48V. That's your phantom power. That's for microphones that don't have power. These have double A, so you don't wanna do that. The mic option is okay. In some settings, you can set up your lav in a way where line is more appropriate. But in my setup, the way I've been using it for the last 10 years, I've always been on mic with those kind of settings that I showed you, AF out sensitivity and so on, are set to that. And that's pretty much all you would have to know on the camera setup. This is the XLR input. If you, again, have XLR, if you don't have XLR, you'll have to use a mini eighth inch like this. But I do, in this case, I have two of them right here. So I think that gives you a good overview on how to get started with these Sennheiser mics, the G3, the G4, even if you get an old G2, I'm sure the G5 is gonna come out at some point. These are some of the greatest wireless mics ever made. They're by far the industry standard. Once you go to the next level, there's a different brand called Electrosonic, which is the industry standard for film and television and commercials. They run more about the two, $3,000 range, but these run about the five, $600 range. And for the most commercial type industrial work that I know a lot of people do use these in professional environments. They're a really great mic to use for the price. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe. I post easy to follow filmmaking videos every single week and I hope to catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching this one.